insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Over the course of the last 10 weeks, I did an experiment. That experiment was a podcast that I called The Julian McBain Show. And overall, as I'm losing myself here, trying to put my phone off to one side, and overall, the experiment was, can I combine gaming with a podcast that touched on cultural, social, and political issues and have it be successful? And here are the results of the 10 weeks. Over the last 10 weeks, my analytics have dropped precipitously. My total amount of watch time has dropped by about 25%. My total number of views by almost 50%. My total number of subscribers have gone from around 28 a month to one. So obviously I'm doing something wrong. And so I think that one of the things that I have done wrong is I tried to combine two very distinct audiences. And so for today, I'm going to talk about what my plan is while doing some uh, the, the Qhof dungeons on Tuan and what my plan is going forward. And I'm going to start today off by saying, welcome back to the manor. Okay, so let's get started on Kuha 5. Where did my keys go? Um, oh, that's right, they're tools. Oh, that's Kuha 3, there it is. Hoping I can actually manage Kuha 5. Oh. We'll find out. I'm sure I'm going to need ghost armor. So let's uh, make that change. And is my sword properly equipped? Oh, I got to wait for that. Yep, it is. Okay. I'm assuming I'm going to have to go for broke on this one. So, so okay. Here, here's the basic deal. My goal, as always, is to provide content that you enjoy watching. That's the goal. Oh, look at that. I nailed it right on the head. And sometimes I succeed at that and sometimes I don't. In this case, it's obvious to me that one of those things that you wanted was not the podcast, at least not on this channel. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take some time away from the podcast. After 10 weeks, I've got a, I've got a lot of good information, right? I, I work in marketing. To me, data is everything. Well, for 10 weeks, I did what is essentially a market test. That market test showed me that this is not the place to do the podcast, or that was not the way to do it. The other thing I need to work on is formatting. I don't have a good format for the podcast. And I'm continuing to try to provide more content while not taking out too much of my time away from other obligations and responsibilities. That's a really hard thing to balance. So for the next two weeks or so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the podcast and what I can do to make it um, better. And then I am likely going to roll the podcast back out on a different channel. What that will do is it'll provide people who want to watch the podcast the opportunity to watch it on a distinct channel that has a different audience that is not trying to split the audience of a single channel and i think that was um that was brought up by one of my mods that's like you know you, you've got two very distinct audiences and that's probably hurting the algorithm in your analytics and i'm like oh damn you nailed it <laughs> that's exactly what's happening you know, and could it be partially because, you know, I might have called out Google as being part of the evil, evil corporation or the megacorp? Yeah, that didn't help me. But largely speaking, I, I think it's definitely the the former is that I've got two very I'm, I'm aiming at two very distinct audiences on a single channel. And that's not a very smart thing to do. 
so instead what I'll do is I'm I've reassessed and I'm gonna move forward doing it this other way I don't think I'm going to abandon the podcast but I need to come up with a distinct formula because I started with one format and then moved it to another format and I need to not do that that's part of my problem so that's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna figure out the formatting I'm gonna relaunch the podcast on a separate channel for which you will all have access to it because I know that there are people on this channel that really enjoy the podcast I've gotten a lot of good feedback but I think oh, I should probably have changed back to my sword um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback so it's not that people dislike the podcast I think it's because I've split my audiences and not paid attention to my health that it's hurt me so as of right now I do not plan to abandon the podcast I do need to reassess how to do the podcast and that's legit everyone goes through these growing pains on this channel I'm going to return to the format that works this is the manor this is my digital thief here is where I play this is where I gather with my friends and we're going to stick to the stuff that this channel was known for. Gaming, Entropia Universe, and whatever I'm live streaming. And that's how we're going to do it. Like today, I decided to do the, the level 5 Kuhoffs without knowing what I was getting myself into. Thankfully, I am high enough level to actually deal with it. <laughs> because otherwise, that would have been a waste of ped. Ugh. Um... And I will continue to pursue Toulon and all of the treasures that Toulon has to offer and the other planets in Entropia Universe. This has been a very interesting couple of months. You know, touching on things that I've never... In a lot of ways, I haven't had the courage to touch on because a lot of them are so contentious. And to have such a positive reception of of these um these changes has been immense and i really appreciate i want to to say to my audience i really appreciate the fact that you've all been very receptive to the changes even though it was a it was a really drastic change from what i was doing before this channel was 100 percent apolitical and in fact i've told people not to be political on my channel and then i jumped into a political podcast so go figure but it was it was a risk and it was a risk that was worth taking. And I stand by having taken that risk. At the same time, I also need to recognize when something isn't working. And what's not working is, at the very least, combining a political podcast with a gaming channel. Now, does that mean that I think that combining gaming and podcasting doesn't work? No. I am likely going to keep the format of the podcast where I'm playing a game while I'm podcasting the same. Um, that's not a final decision, but I think that that has some real positive um, options to it. On the other hand, I am not going to make... Combining them all on one channel is likely a big part of my problem. And so figuring out how can I how can I do the podcast without increasing my workload significantly and bring you the content that you are all used to having. And I think the big thing I'm going to do there is my big focus is going to be on this channel. It has to be. Because you are my core. You are the ones who, who've brought me this far, and I am not going to abandon you. So once I'm done reassessing whether or not to continue the podcast and how to do it, I'll separate it. And I, I know I'm kind of circling back on that, but this, these, these are the thoughts going through my head. The other thing is, is I really miss this format of talking to you, you know, in and of itself, this is pretty much a vlog or a podcast, but it's a much different feel from what the Julian McBain show was. This is more casual. This is more fun. You know, we're talking about just life generally. And I know life recently, like, like the last year and a half-ish, 
has been, oh, look, I'm in my home again. Yay. But we're all in the same boat for that. And I think that Entropia Universe has seen a lot of good stuff in the last year, especially from the Virtual Sense team. Like, they have holy buckets. Look at all those dots. <laughs> Bombastic classical music. <laughs> What's the uh, what's the old term? Ominous Latin chorus. Ominous Latin chorus. That's a, I took that from uh, Eight Bit Theater, which is a hilarious sprite comic, by the way, based on the original Final Fantasy. I have re I probably know the majority of that comic verbatim, 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 verbatim. Um, a lot of fun. I can't believe how many friggin' mobs are in this dungeon. It's, then again, this is likely meant for non-solo. That's okay. We'll just burn through. Um, oh, looks like DME has posted in the... F or Ant just did a post in the forum. Okay. Well, we might have some breaking breaking news. HTTPS colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash y8v63za2. Um... Okay, so this is this is breaking news directly from the Virtual Sense team and their head ant. Hey all, and this is a quote. Hey all, as a lot of the community are aware, I've been he we've been heavily focused on our Maria Con Monria content for a few months now, and I'm afraid I've had to make the difficult decision to delay the release. There are a few things that have come up during testing that I'm not quite happy with. We also need some technical implementation to be completed by Mindark before we can go live. I was hoping to be able to release during this VU and get some early feedback, but I'm afraid this won't be possible. This will not impact our annual St. Patrick's Day event, any codex implementation by Mindark, or the Toulon release. We will be focusing on resolving the issues and planning for the annual St. Patrick's Day event. I don't have an estimated release date yet, but I will be working closely with Mindark to get our content released as soon as possible. I will update everyone when I have something con more concrete to share. Unquote. That comes directly from Ant the Moon Manager at their on their forum. You will find it using this tiny URL here. Um, well, you, it's the same one. Apparently, uh, Tia Go Biotech reposted the same tiny URL in Toulon before, or or is attempting to do it before DME could, and DME is just faster on the take. Um. Okay, so I'm just saying thanks for that up, heads up. Good luck on the fixes. Um, so that was breaking. I'm recording this, of course, on Saturday. I'm sure a lot of you will probably already know this by the time this releases Sunday morning. But for those of you who are not aware, Monria is seeing a delay on their next release. So, which is unfortunate. But to, to quote uh, Miyamoto Sensei, a delayed game is eventually good, but a bad um, a rushed game is forever bad. Good gravy. There's just a metric shitload of mobs in here. Like, seriously. Far more than I expected. Far more than I expected. Which is fine. Not what I had come in here planning to do. Not a bad thing, just not what I had come in here planning to do. I kind of expected it to be like Kuhoff 1. 
decent number of mobs. You gotta plow through them. But uh, no, this 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 is this is definitely epic boss fight territory, which actually isn't bad. Ouch. I honestly, one of the thing complaints I have had about Entropia Universe is that there aren't more, there isn't more content like this. You know, dungeons to explore, challenges to be had, you know, elite mobs that you you take on, which I know the Monria team, or I should say uh, Monria itself, has a lot of these things because they've got the big cave, which is essentially a gigantic non-instance dungeon. That's what it is. The mobs get harder the deeper you go. And then, of course, they've actually got world bosses, which is something that most of Entropia Universe doesn't have. Unless the devs spawn them right on top of you, which is always hilarious. Like that fucking chirpy. But... <laughs> the hell was that? That was in game. I hope that was in game. Otherwise, something big crashed into my house. There's no shaking, so nothing crashed into my house. Um, this is good content. And I'm actually quite impressed at the scope of the, just, just the sheer number of mobs. This is like mayhem number of mobs. This is nuts. And you have to do this three times. Think about that for a second. Like, I knew it was a risk coming down here, but... Wow. And you only have three hours to do this whole thing. Which I don't think I'm in any danger of failing. I mean, obviously, I've got good equipment. I'm at the right level. Dude, your club hurts. Stop hitting me. <laughs> Try to clean them up in some sort of systemic, systematic manner. You know, I, I do think it's unfortunate... Oh, hang on. Um, it won't affect what was done for the Toulon portion of the release. Um, Ant will write more in his release notes on Tuesday. That's why I've always said that no matter how much a VU is hyped and Monria, the Monria focus is really cool, something like this can happen. Uh, Ant will write more in his release notes. Oh, that's it. I mean... It is what it is, you know, and I wish I wish DME and Ant and the whole Virtual Sense team good luck and getting the next update polished up. They have never disappointed, in my opinion, when it comes to actually releasing things. And if they say, hey, we need more time, then I say we give them more time. You know? I mean, things like this happen, and it's not like the the cyberpunk release, which got delayed a bunch of times, and there was a lot of, um, well, let's just say that CD Projekt Red got a lot of bad press because of mistakes they made, and they should have. Now, don't get me wrong; I think Cyberpunk 2077 is an awesome game, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep live streaming because I do think it's an awesome game. I think that their their ability to tell a story. might be unrivaled like i look at the way they tell stories and i look at the way square enix tells stories and i'm like i think they've beaten square enix and square enix has a masterful team for their storytelling they really do cd project red probably has a better team than they do but it doesn't mean they're perfect and they they buggered a lot of things um by comparison, the Virtual Sense team has never disappointed me. And saying, hey guys, we need a couple more months to fix some issues we're having. 
I think that transparency is what much much needed in among gaming developers. And so I want to I want to shout out to the Virtual Sense team for announcing this as soon as they had the news. And um, again, this will not negatively impact the Tuwan release. This will only impact the Monreal re release. And so while it is unfortunate, I wish them the best of luck, and I think that they will pull through. I do. Because they always have. So, okay. Back to the dungeon. When I saw that massive red dots, I was like, oh my god. And I wasn't wrong. I was expecting far fewer mobs than this. But what should I... I should have known better. It's an Entropia Universe game. Now, the only reason I, I thought that way is probably because the Kuhoff 1 dungeon is calibrated to a player that would be at that level, which includes the amount of, of um, depot they do, the amount of ammo they're going to be carrying, things of that nature. Did my, did my meta go up? My meta went up. Awesome. We'll tackle that later. I didn't think it would have gone up that much. Once, once we hit rank four, which I have the feeling will happen in this dungeon because of the sheer volume of enemies, we'll see how much a single rank in the do hall increases meta because I don't think... Not all codex challenges are created equal when it comes to the meta. I have the feeling the tougher the mob, the more you get in meta. This guy hits like a truck. The only downside to doing this is if you run out of ammo, you're screwed. Because <laughs> you don't get shrapnel until the end. You've got to buy it from the terminal. That's really fucking ominous. That is really ominous. I don't like it. Precious. I kind of hope this is the only major chamber, but at the same time, this is good content. Just have to grind through all of this. No, because we had the earlier chamber back there, and I think, I know Kuhoff 1, I think, is only two chambers. It might be three. But I notice that this one is organized differently too. Which makes sense because we're fighting do halls, not kafas and tab tabs. Which I do find the name tab tab for whatever a tab tab is very, very funny. And I want to know why only one of them wears pants, which I think is the, the, the world boss one. It's like level 80. It's like a brick shit house. He like coughs on you and you die. Pretty sure the only people who could take them on in solo are JVK and Bonnie. And probably Raven Jade. Raven Jade's pretty badass. I know there are other Ubers out there, but I don't know who they are. I've had the privilege of actually um, fighting alongside Bonnie during one of their... And JVK during one of their um, Titans of Space events that they hold with the devs which i think it's awesome the relationship that the titans of space have with the devs they've done a phenomenal job cu cultivating that relationship and making a, a just a great time for the players and so i wanted 
I want to do a huge shout out to them because they've they've earned it. They absolutely deserve it. Um, Bonnie's stream is also incredibly entertaining. She is an an outstanding entertainer. You really, if you don't watch her Twitch stream already, you really need to. Um, I believe she, I know for a fact she streams every Thursday. That's usually the one I catch every week. Um, I believe she streams on Friday and Sunday. She doesn't generally stream on Saturday unless it's the dev event once a month. And th when they hold that event, it's like two in the fucking morning for her. It's like, holy shit, y'all are up late. Because they're four hours behind, or five hours behind where I am. And they hold these events in like the, the late afternoon, early evening, like around dinner time for me. And it's just like, do y'all sleep? Like ever? <laughs> so. Raise a glass to the Titans for the good work they do. Trying to think of the what he sounds like. He sounds like a bear. Like the the timber of the roar sounds like a bear. But I mean, he looks like an ogre. Oh, that's pretty much what a duhall. I think that that might be what duhall means. Oh no, it's just unique to Entropia Universe, which probably should have been expected. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was like a reference. I know that there's a, an Arabian theme or Middle Eastern theme to Tulan. Or maybe even a Persian theme. But a Middle Eastern theme, generally. And I wasn't sure if... There might have been a, an actual, like, Arabic or Farsi reference to the word duhal, which I am probably terribly misremounted. It's probably more like duhal. Duhal? That's Ahmed. Duhal? I don't know. I can... Not very good at pronouncing words. I have a hard enough time with the English language. Which I'm convinced. I'm convinced that English is the result of mixing German with French. I, I'm convinced that's the case. Because English is a Germanic language, right? And it, a lot of people think it's a Romance language. It's not. It's actually a Germanic language. It is. Its root language is Old German, which then came to Old English, which then came to Middle English, which actually most modern people can read fairly well. Middle English, especially late Middle English, looks a lot like modern English. Um, or maybe I'm just thinking that way because I'm a Freemason and I have to read texts in Middle English, and so for me it's normal. But Shakespeare is Middle English. Uh, later Middle English, but Middle English. And, uh, but it, if you look at Old English, it's actually very German-like. And, uh, but then the Normans invaded England, Angleland, or Ang Angland at the time. Uh, actually, about the same time that Harold Hardrada invaded. So, you know, Harold Hardrada with the um, the Norse came in from the north and the Saxons fought them and then they had to flip a 180, bang a Yui and rush down to the southern coast because William the Bastard came across the English Channel and was ended up, you know, turning the whole place Norman. So you ended up with a very... Norse German culture, those are the Saxons, because uh, the Viking, the, the Norse, which most people know as the Vikings, held huge swaths of um, the British Isles, 
No, that wasn't it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, that's a lot of mobs. Again. And so there was there was a lot of Norse influence in especially in Scotland and Ireland, but um, to a certain extent, England and Wales. What we now know as England and Wales at the time they weren't called that, of course. And so, the Saxons fought off Herdrada, and then had to, to quickly bang a Ewing and rush down to, um, because he beat Harold Herdrada at um, Stanford Bridge, and actually a single berserker held the bridge for like hours. A single berserker held the bridge for a long time. I don't know if it was hours, but it was it was long enough to where they. They finally said, okay, we're going to put a couple guys on a boat and float it under the bridge so, the, so that the berserker can't hit him and hit the guy with a spear until he dies, which is how they managed to take the bridge. They couldn't actually take the bridge from this one frothing berserker. They had to use some sort of um, different strategy because it just wasn't working for them. Oh, these guys are more powerful. Okay, we can dig it. Um, so... Um, so that's what they did. And, of course, William the Conqueror ended up winning. And the Normans took over Britain. And so you had all of this, this old English with all of these French speakers. And the English were forced to adapt. And so they ended up, like, melting the languages together. Which is why English is... Hard, is, is Second, the second, I think the second hardest language to learn besides Mandarin. Uh, possibly, possibly third. I don't know how hard Cantonese is. I'm actually really concerned about my ammo situation. There are so many mobs down here, I'm not sure my ammo is going to hold out. I mean, I don't mind doing an ammo buy. But I do want to do the whole dungeon for you all. This dungeon is massive. Like, this score up here... I have, in the level one, it doesn't come close. Can't touch it. I wonder how many tokens I'll get out of this dungeon. Watch me, like, double the current amount I have. That would actually be pretty cool. Um, especially for a 50 ped key. It's not cheap for a freaking key to get into a dungeon that's... And we'll see what happens. Now, I don't know if this was actually here before Virtual Sins took over. Although, even if it was here, it wouldn't have been very readily available because the um, population of Tuwan was so low. And then Virtual Sense moved in and... They, I think that they really injected a lot of good stuff into the Toulon team. From what I understand, the Toulon team is all still there. I don't think any of them got, got released. But I think what they did is they, they injected a lot of creative thought into, like, you know, when, when, you, when you're on a project for a long time and you're just like, we're trying to make this work and nothing's working, you get frustrated. And, I mean, I could be totally off base in, in saying it like this, and I'm not saying that this is what happened. But if I had to guess, they were busy trying to make what they had work, and they were spinning their wheels, and then they're like, hey, Monria, you all have a good thing going. What are you doing that's different? And Monria is like, well, we tried these things. And by doing that and by, by merging, they've really injected a lot of life into Toulon, 
Like, if you watch my last set of Tulon videos, there's no one on the planet. Like, the planet is basically abandoned. And I'm not saying that to be mean to Tulon. It's just that was the fact of the matter. It was unfortunate. I thought there was a lot of potential. And this is the potential I was seeing. When I first came to Tulon a year ago, year, year and a half ago, I thought it was a lot of potential that was wasted. I thought there was a lot of good stuff that could happen. And one, I don't, didn't think enough players were giving it. But again, part of that's because you need to have the right stuff to attract the players. And now they have that that stuff. Part of it's because they said, hey, come hunt here and you might win a free apartment or shop. I mean, incentive goes a long way, right? <laughs> but at the same time, the, the greater interaction, the greater engagement, the work that they're doing, the improvements they've made, um, adding the codex definitely didn't hurt, which I know that was mind arc and not too long. I, I think that the, the codex thing hurt a lot of the planet partners. I understand why mind arc did it the way they did, because they didn't want to force it on the entire system of planet partners before they had a chance to really pilot it well. And a year for a system like that is actually a good piloting time because it allows you to work out any bugs and, and, and fix any bugs mistakes but at the same time everyone saw the benefits to the codex and they're like oh we want to jump on this codex and they did and all the other planet partners are like well what do we do now uh now next island did their own thing they brought out the gorgon armor they released apartments and so they found a way around the obstacle of the codex and i think that what happened was is that the other planet partners started saying oh Next Island found a way around it. Well, let's do the same thing. And that's where their virtual sense had or virtual sense had their um their merger where teams Monria and Tulon combined. Um, because by your powers combined. <laughs> Sorry. And by dint of that, they um they managed to come up with all of this new great content. And sometimes all it takes is a fresh perspective, you know? And I'm willing to bet that the team that team Tulon brought a lot of good perspective to Monria. Um because like Tulon has a very diverse set of flora and fauna. A lot of diverse ecosystems. Monria by its nature doesn't have a lot of diversity when it comes to mobs or when it comes to um, like scenery because it's a moon, right? Nothing grows there except these horrific monsters. And I'm not saying that this is a negative thing. I think it plays the theme very, very well. I think it's appropriate for Monria to have a limited number of mob types. I do think that they would... I, I'm willing to bet they will expand the number of types of mobs as they continue to develop their um, their content. And maybe that's part of the reason they're doing this delay. Maybe that they have this new mob they want to release with an with a whole new um, model. So not like when they when they did the Dunwich Horror, the Dunwich Horror is a yog that's fucking gigantic and very, very blue and actually looks it reminds me of the blue tarantula, but it looks awesome. And it, it's brutal because it just does AOE damage all day long. And it can damage vehicles, which I think all mobs technically can. But, like, I was in the air and taking damage, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that happened. Um, so, brutal mob. Ow. But I would not be surprised if, if that was part of it. It's like, we've got this new mob. We're trying to work out the collision and the movements and the animations, which even as simple when compared to a lot of other uh, like modern or triple A games, the movement is on, well, really any MMO mob, but in Tropia Universe in particular, the there's still a number of things you need to make sure works because if you screw up one thing, it, it screws everything up. Sometimes. You can, you can break whole games. If clipping is an issue or if collision is an issue, 
you know, if the collision's wrong, a mob can clip into the geometry and just be stuck there because of the way it clipped in. Um, you don't see that very often in Entropia Universe. Uh, more often, this this is this is what I like to call the Bethesda experience. It's a world of clipping. <laughs> And yes, I, I rag on Bethesda a lot, and I rag on Todd Howard, and I do so because they are a major AAA provider. And they're supposed to be the standard. And sometimes the standard they set is substandard. And so I will rag on Bethesda, just like I've ragged on Blizzard, just like I'll rag on anyone, just, just like I'll rag even on CD Projekt Red for the mistakes they made. Um... And I'll rag on Mindark. And if I feel that Virtual Sense makes a mistake, I'll criticize them too. The thing is, is that when it comes to when it comes to all of the developers, right? All of the developers I have played, and, and we're talking about my favorites, right? Bethesda, Blizzard uh, used to be, Mindark, Virtual Sense. These are my favorite developers in, Vir in the Virtuverse team, of course. Um, these are my favorite developers. This is why I've given them so much of my money to play their games, right? Bethesda. I have Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas on two different platforms. Two different platforms for both of those games. I also have Fallout's 1, 2, and Tactics. Okay. And Skyrim. I also have Skyrim. So I've given Bethesda a good chunk of my money over the course of many years. I also have the friggin' Pip-Boy. So I bought Fallout 4 hard copy with the Pip-Boy back when it first came out, only to find out it didn't work on my computer. So I am not saying I hate Bethesda, but I will damn well criticize them when they make mistakes. Like the fact that they're getting sued over the garbage about their season pass, which I'm not really going to get into today, but... It's there. Out of all of them, and this includes Virtuals, uh, Virtuverse, which is still a, a game that's in alpha, so I limit my criticism for that team because I'm playing a game that's literally supposed, you know, we play the game because we know it's broken because it's not finished, so we need to figure out where it's broken so they can finish it. Um... Virtual Sense has earned zero criticism from me. That's not easy to do. If it ever happens, then it'll happen and I will come out and say so. But uh, Team Monria in particular, before Virtual Sense was really a thing, because I think Virtual Sense was the name of the company after the merger. Um, but Team Monria and Virtual Sense generally have never earned criticism from me because I have never seen them do anything worthy of criticism. And things like this, if, if I had a criticism, and again, I don't know what the age of these dungeons are, um... Setting an expectation of what you're going to face would probably be my one thing. And that's not even necessarily a requirement because a lot of games have dungeons where you don't know what you're getting into. And I know that at level 5, it's going to be pretty pretty steep. Um, but just to make sure that the player goes in with enough ammunition and enough weapons so they don't end up screwing themselves would be my one... If, if I... If I wanted to make an adjustment, that's the one thing I would do. Most Entropians are smart enough to know, hey, if I'm going into a into an instance, take extra guns, which I have a full ex full TT extra sword. I had like 400 ped worth of ammo on me. I will be very surprised if I go through it all, but uh, I've gone through a good chunk of it. And I'm under a thousand shots off with my sword, so that does concern me a touch. So here's to hoping that this is the last chamber and the boss is next. Because if I run into a third chamber like this, I might be looking at Shit's Creek.
The only other thing is because it's timed, I would, I would, well, no, because you can't set a, uh, a time expectation because you don't know what the person's going in for th for equipment. Because going in here with an LB35 is going to have a significant time difference from someone going in here with an LB45. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk back that particular criticism to, to that piece. Um, because obviously they, they don't know what you're walking in here with for, with for equipment. I mean, I could, theoretically, I could stand here all day with Buchan's spare rifle and eventually manage to get to the other end. It'd kind of be like trying to take down Goliath with a freaking toothpick, but I could do it. I'd go through way more ped than I should because I'd be getting hit a hell of a lot more and I'd have to repair book and spare rifle several times and they'd be regening. And actually with Bukins, I might not make it through the timer. <laughs> I'm already kind of worried of, we're at 45 minutes. Good lord. Oh, 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 oh. Heal, heal, heal. Whoa. Ow. Jesus, he hits like a truck. The boss is going to be hard. I can already tell. It's a good thing I have my regen. Oh. It's like, here, let me take a third of your health. Like, yes, I get that you hit like a truck. You can stop hitting me now. <laughs> Did we ever check to see what the meta went up? 20%. Okay, so it's going back up 20% again. Because I know that once I hit a certain level with the Kafaz, it stopped going up as quickly. Oh, no. Why are we attacking the one in the back? Tab targeting, I swear to God. Well, we're going through quite a bit of that sword. I know I could put the bigger amp on it. That wouldn't help my efficiency any. It would affect my time efficiency. But I think the I think the one is enough. I see these guys hitting me with those clubs, and I'm like, ow, my face, ow, my face. Oh, you know what it is? The amp impacts the amount of regen I get, and I'm used to having the four on here for the regen. Even though I think I've got the best regen amp on here, it's only a small percentage of the amount of damage that I do. It's like 8%. Ugh, we're down to 800 rounds. Getting nervous, guys. Getting nervous. Worth it, though. I'm thinking I'm going to break 100,000 damage inflicted. Uh, damage received, 5,189. Heal points, oh, yeah, I can't... Received, no. 
Heal points on self, 817. Which, to be fair, for all that, uh... For all that damage taken, that's not bad. I guess it doesn't count. The regen doesn't count. That's interesting. Oh, God. I just had a thought. This is the dungeon. This is the dungeon where I could do it. I could get a group in here. And just scream, Leroy! <laughs> Jenkins! Oh god, they kill me. And I, and I deserve it. <laughs> Actually, they probably just stand back and laugh as I die. <laughs> I, I have to admit, it is, it is horribly tempting. To do a special video where I... Like, I just, like, Leroy the whole dungeon to see if it's even possible. I don't think I could manage to kite the whole dungeon. I think that they'd catch up with me enough to kill me. It would be worth it, though. Maybe that'll be a bonus video. I've got two more keys. Or two more attempts. We're getting there. We are getting there. It's one hell of a grind, though. Like, I play grindy games. I did not expect this. This dungeon is probably more set up for groups anyway. Where, you know, like, if the Titans went in here, they'd probably just mop up. Right, but they could probably solo this place and be taking on multiple mobs at a time and not even care. It's like, oh, look, deflected. Let's go in here with Perseus and just waltz on through. Um, no, they, they're not, they wouldn't do that. Um, but this, this is a place where you probably want to bring, like, a party of four or five would probably do pretty well in here. You can solo it, obviously. But from a time perspective, I think a party of four or five would probably have a faster or an easier time overall. Not that it's proven, in, you know, difficult. It's just lengthy. Which, okay, for this type, for Entropia Universe, that's basically what the difficulty is, is the, the endurance. Because that's what this is. This reminds me in some ways of my tiger test. So for those of you who don't know, I am part of a fighting school called the Black Tigers. And when you go to get your scarf, which is essentially like a black belt, you have to take a 10-minute test. And it's 10 minutes of constant fighting. And you can't stop. Like, if you stop, you fail. Um, that being said, you can try to quit. And the, instru the proctors are usually like, ah, 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 you're not allowed to quit. Keep going. Which is exactly what happened to me. <laughs> But the the endurance part of this, where you have to you have to just grind on through, is kind of reminiscent of that. Because I'm not going to waste any part of this key. I will do all three attempts, even though it's kind of a ped sink. I think it's worthwhile. It was worth it for this episode, especially my my first episode back in the manor, as opposed to being the uh, the podcast. But this was not what I was expecting. Not a complaint. Just not what I was expecting. Now coming up with a title for this is going to be a whole nother, uh, whole nother thing. <laughs>
Cut him down. Six hundred rounds. It's going to be close. Oh, looks like the uh, Normandy is doing their rounds. I'm pretty sure that the, the Titans of Space do this professionally, like 100% professionally. Play the game. Which I think would be awesome. I'm not sure if I could do it. Like, I do these videos. And I enjoy it. But I think, like, their whole... I think this is their income in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, the content creation that Bonnie does is probably a good chunk of hers. I could be totally wrong about that, too, because she gives away just shitloads of stuff. I just I can't believe the sheer volume of shit she gives away. Like, just, like, flat 25 and 300 ped prizes. Like, it's nothing. She's put a lot of work in. Um... But she also has a lot of subscribers, too, so I'm sure that helps to fund it. But I see the, the Titans of Space on here at all hours. Understanding that they are a group, um, I would not be surprised if I, would, if, if I were to find out that they do this 100% professional. Are any of the Titans of Space watching this? Can you confirm or refute that, please? I hope this is the last chamber. I really do. Got some more mobs back here. I hope the next one's the boss chamber because whew, my ammo is not going to hold out. The one downside to this, that the way they do the dungeons, is you don't get anything until you hit, until you finish. No loot whatsoever. Which, if you're cycling ammo, if you're reliant on cycling ammo, that's gonna hurt you. We might be doing an on-camera ammo buy. This this is nuts. Which was not in my plan. It certainly was not. Yep, broke 100,000 damage. And we still have a bunch of mobs back there to fight, which I think this is going to end up being the boss chamber. I hope this ends up being the boss chamber. Holy shit. Come on. Damn, if I had known it was going to be this long, I would have told you all to get some popcorn before we started. <laughs> going to turn into a feature-length film. Delving into Kuhoff 05 Dungeon. Although it is kind of appropriate. Usually, uh, first episodes or return episodes are double length, right? To be continued around the bottom. And you get Mar Major Barrett's voice on there. And now the conclusion...
Good grief and little fishes. Check out this. That's that's really cool. Good gravy. The first time I actually did one of these dungeons, I did it with another player whose name unfortunately escapes me, and I apologize that I don't remember who I ran it with. Um, it might have been Velvet. Might have been Velvet. Um, it's like 10, 10, 30 at night. I'm... Frankly, I was drunk. He's like, let's run a dungeon. I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> had no clue what I was getting myself into. It was a good time. Got some cool loot. It certainly was not the level 5, though. <laughs> this would have been good for a live stream. I have to admit, I never thought of that. Oh, we're, we're about to hit 400 shots. Oh. God, I hope the boss is up next. I really do. So, if the boss isn't through this next corridor, I'm going to call the video. And I might do a special one where it's like, I'll know exactly what I need to go in with. And we'll do a whole feature presentation of it. I don't, I can't even say that because I don't want to just stop in the middle of it. That wouldn't be fair to you guys. When they say challenging, they certainly did not joke. I think that's the biggest challenge of Entropia Universe, is understanding the logistics of Entropia Universe. Okay. This looks like the lead-up to a boss chamber. I'm hoping this is the lead-up to a boss chamber. Shit. There's the door. Okay, I think I think this is it. There should be a small number of mobs through the door. And then the boss. In theory, we should have just enough ammo to get through. Which, I know, I just said the words in theory. And that's always an awful standard to set, isn't it? Good gravy. Ow. Hundred and fourteen thousand damage dealt. 114,000. That's huge. Just think, that's, that, this is the type of damage we do in a mayhem. I will say that we'd probably be done by now if I'd used the other amp. I recognize that fact. From an efficiency standpoint, I don't know if it would have worked out. Because of overkill. Overkilling with this amp is much less um, ammo consumptive as overkilling with the other amp. Now, in the end, you end up getting it back, but you got to make it to the end first. And that's where I would be concerned of whether or not I can make it. Now, if necessary, I'll, I'll do a 500 pet drop 
of ammo. Kind of a pain, but, you know, you do what you have to do. Most of these, I think, are in three chambers, a beginning, a big middle, and a small end. So we'll see what happens coming up. And the Mercil tokens, it looks like several of the pages have been purchased. Ultimately, I personally want an apartment. I want to be able to call two on home. I do the same thing for Monria. Um, but if I can win an apartment or earn one through gameplay, I'd rather do that than do it by depot. I mean, if, if you've ever been to the freaking towers on Monria, their apartments are insane. Especially the penthouse apartments. They got a second floor with a friggin' pool. Oh dear. Oh dear. There's no map. That's the other thing that I wish we could have is in, in instances there should be a map. This looks like it might be the boss chamber though. A lot more scattered mobs. But I don't know, you've got the corridor over there so I'm not convinced that that's the case. quickly log into my EU account in case I've got to make a quick depot. This is what I call suboptimal, but it is what it is. Really should be expected though. No battle plays out past the first confrontation. Okay. Okay, we're prepped. All I gotta do is hit the button. 200 shots left. I'm probably gonna have to hit the button. Complain all you want, dude. see the break in the um, geometry up there. This is quite the run. Totally, totally did not expect this. Like, I bought a five, a three, and a couple of ones thinking, oh, it'll be part of my evening. No big deal. No... I'm running a Kuha 5, see you in two hours. By the way, you got to do it two more times before the end of the day. 
Actually, I don't know if you lose it if you don't use them all on the same day. It would not surprise me. We're doing it. There it is. Now that we've got ammo again, we're going to swap the amps out. I normally wouldn't. What I want to get done tonight. The damage increase also increases my heal ability. Evade. I knew that was going to happen. That damage increase makes a huge difference, though. I cannot believe how big this friggin' dungeon is. It's like you're basically fighting a whole goddamn army. Does it give me, like, a mob count? Killed creatures. 182. We've killed 182 mobs so far. Good gravy. No wonder it's taking so long. I've almost plowed through 200 mobs. For me, this is at level shit. This is what I do when I'm going doing high intensity training for my avatar. Which is basically me. What are you doing? Attack the guy actually swinging at you. Don't go after the random guy in the corner. You'll, you'll, we'll kill him soon enough. <laughs> Jesus. We've plowed through a lot of Duhal ranks too.
Okay. Hopefully that's the final chamber door. There goes tough or just expensive. <laughs> Both. Yeah, it is what it is. Part of the reason we love the game though. It really is. Like this this is the stuff that we we play the game for. But it's challenging and I can say, "Hey, you know, I beat the challenge." This is the boss chamber. Good deal. Come on now. Good gravy. We're doing the thing. We're in the boss chamber. We're almost there. How many kills? How many kills? 193. So I wasn't quite there when I said it. I thought I was. I miscounted. Boss will appear in 30 seconds. Here's the hoping I can manage this. I know I can, it's just a matter of how tough will this be. They wouldn't make it incompletable. Level 21. We're good. Ouch, he hits like a goddamn truck, though. My higher evade is going to definitely save my ass here. Come on. And the frickin' um, regen. My my leech, my regen, which it's not called leech here. It's called something else, but it's essentially leech. What's it called? Doesn't matter. Five minutes to leave. Get me that goddamn treasure. Global! Kuhoff Key Glass. Whoa, 123 in frickin' shrap. Global again. I think that's part of it is that you will always global on these because it's such a high level. Boom. How many Mersal tokens? 336. Yup, I about doubled my Mersal tokens. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. I need to take a step away for a few minutes. Thank you for watching. That was awesome. That was insane. An hour and 17 minutes. If you made it this far, thank you. 196 freaking kills. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time. So make sure you subscribe. As always, I really appreciate the support. And we'll see you in the next one.